Hi, it's Cindy from Quilters Covered in Ankeny, Iowa, yet again for Purse Party Part 5. And then that will be it for this year. So, every year we do, you know, all the purses and bags that I showed you, but I also want to give you a little bit more in depth on a few of the tools that I think work out extremely well to help with some of these purses and bags. So, um, I'm going to start with just showing this off. So, we did Tool School last year. And Tool School is kind of a purse party alternative where we just talk about um, tools and fun things with to use for our projects. And this one was um, called My Place for Everything Couch. It was just the freebie one I gave away. But it's a great one to hold all of your stuff. So I only bring this with me today because it holds all my stuff. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the extra zipper pulls. So these are a package that you can get. That um, So if you're going to interchange all of the pulls on some of the fun projects I showed, you're going to want the fun colored zipper pulls. This little compartment holds my Wonder Clips and my Alpha Biddies. So some of you go, yep, yep, know what you're talking about. Many of you go, not a clue. So the Wonder Clips, I bet you kind of know about the Wonder Clips. Wonder Clips are especially nice when you are using the foam because you can't pin through several layers of foam. So you're going to need a Wonder Clip to hold everything in place while you're sewing. But when you're cutting these things out, they may call for a bunch of different pieces that look to be pretty much the same size. And so you might want to label them. So I love these. They're called alphabities and they come in numbers and letters all in one package. They're kind of a plasticky, but they work great for labeling little rows when you're doing quilting and also for all the purses. So I will label my piece, just put my little die with my little wonder clip, and then I'm going to know when I get to T, this is the chunk of stuff that I need. So it's a great little organizational way to do. Okay, so that's those guys. Um, otherwise, in here are my bias tape makers, and I think I've told you guys about those quite a few times in the past. But what a bias tape maker will do is take a piece of fabric that runs through. It doesn't have to be on the bias. That's the scary part of these. When it comes out the other end, it pre-folds the ends in, and you iron it. And so that's what I've used around the sides of my bag because I didn't want a double fold binding like I would use on my regular quilt. And then the smaller size will make my ties for me so I'm not trying to turn under little tiny pieces of fabric. So that's those guys. And then you've got your markings, pencils, and all of that kind of stuff. But it's just a great little um, tool thing that I can take that holds all of my stuff. Now, this is probably not going to show you guys anything, but I just want to review a couple of the things that we used in our bag. All right, so the first one is fusible fleece. It is an iron-on interfacing with little bubbles, so you can see which side to iron on. It's also lighter weight, and it's going to be more of a collapsible thing. It's not going to give you a whole lot of body, just a little bit of padding to give it a little prettier look than just fabric alone. The next one is the Dreamy Fusible. This is a Lazy Girl product. It's fusible on one side. It gives more body than fusible fleece, but still not crazy like foam. But I wanted to talk to you guys real quick. This is my Goddess Pressing Sheet. Absolutely love my pressing sheet. This brand has been the best ever. But sometimes you have a fusible, or what you thought was a fusible, and you just don't know. So how are you going to figure it out? Well, you can iron it on there, hope for the best. Or it can stick to your iron or your ironing board cover and go, yep, guess that was a fusible on the other side. Or you can take your chunk, you can sandwich it in your pressing sheet, you can iron it, and when you pull it apart, if it sticks to one side, well, hey, I know that's my fusible side. If it doesn't stick to anything, then it was not a fusible product. So it's just a safe way to do it without making a mess or ruining your project. All right, our next one we talked about was Decor Bond. That is the heavyweight fusible interfacing that's going to give that sweet and salty, I call it. We've got fusible fleece, lighter weight. We've got Decor Bond. This is a match made in heaven. This goes on the outside. This goes on your linings, and it makes a beautiful bag. That's what you're going to find most of the manufacturers call for if they're not having you use the foam. So this is, and we carry the Inner Foam brand, um, which is 
very, very similar, if not exactly, to Annie's Soft Wing Stable. And what I'm going to do is because sometimes this foam has so much air in it that it's very hard to sew through or you might skip stitches. So if you zigzag your seam allowance down or you do several just straight rows of stitching through that seam allowance, it condenses the air out of your foam product, makes it much easier to work with. If you are having a big thing with skipping stitches, try um, a top stitching needle or maybe a ballpoint needle and see if that doesn't help you as well. So that is the foam. And then a couple more products we've got for you. One of them is called uh, Shape Flex. So Shape Flex is a woven fusible interfacing. That's what I use on just about everything. We put it on the back of our hand stitchery project. We put it on the back of our bench pillows, a lot of machine embroidery that I do. But it gives the fabric body. So maybe you have a fabric that's very lightweight and you might see ripples as you're quilting it. We'll put the Shape Flex on the back of it first and you're going to find that it gives that fabric more body and cuts down on a lot of the issues that you might run into. Then I talked to you a little bit about stiff stuff. So that's that lazy girl product that goes in some of our little bowls and things. Well, this one can swish down. I can crunch it as much as I want and it pops right back up into shape. Label not popping up quite as nice, but the rest of the everything works great. This is not a fusible product. So I can use my fiber five basting spray. I can use a fusible web. I've got choices on that. All right, I think that's our insides today. So now let's talk a couple tools. These are all lazy girl tools for clover. The first one is the point to point turner. It is a longer point turner that allows you to get down in the bags to really get to where you need it to go. It also has a nice handle and it's got a nice little marker for creasing on the other side. But speaking of pressing things, so this is the brand new roll and press from Clover and Lazy Girl. There's a little roller on the end. We also found that works really nice if you have a little sore muscle in your neck, though that's just a perk of the tool. So what if I do uh, paper piecing and I'm getting up and down to go to that iron or I'm trying to finger press or use my wooden iron that kind of distorts things? Well, this, so I can take this and actually press my seam. So it works out really, really well. Okay, so then the last thing I wanted to show you is the clover pot ruler and it will allow you to let's say you have a, um, a purse strap that you need to press in a half an inch and press in a half an inch and then fold them in half well this little guy I can iron directly on to so I can press up my seam to whatever I need iron it and I'll get just the best crease ever this is probably one of my most popular tools that little demo would not sell that tool to you but just know it is spectacular I'm hurrying a little bit because it looks like we're running out of juice on the camera and we didn't want to start the whole thing over. So I think we might just leave it at that. Here's my little teaser for, um, this was a new pattern I designed for Purse Party and it is, um, it's going to hold your portable iron right there. And then it really, I did it to do for the Steady Betty's. Where's my Steady Betty? It's over there, but we'll just leave it here. So it'll hold a 16 inch Steady Betty, which is the breast, best, I can't even talk now, best pressing surface ever. It will not allow your fabrics to distort no matter if they're high steam, no matter if they're a bias edge, they are incredible. So the 16 inch one fits perfectly in here, as well as your rotary cutting mat. Then the back pocket is going to hold a 12 and a half inch ruler, as well as anything any smaller than that. So it just makes a great portable place uh, either to store your Steady Betty, because that's what you guys asked me for, was where do I store my Steady Betty and it won't get damaged? Well, in your little Steady Betty carrying bag is going to be the perfect place. But plus it doubles as the greatest thing to take to class that will have all your cutting tools as well as just about anything else you need. You can store in the back or the front pockets. So thank you so much for joining us to Purse Party 2017. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please stop by the store. We should have all the patterns in stock. If you live too far away, know you can always give us a call and we're happy to ship anything to you. So take care and we'll see you soon.